So as we continue our Easter season and Easter celebrations of all that is right in those moments where um, life and kingdom alignment break into our worlds, we want to celebrate the mothers who have brought us up right. I understand that there can be some pain in this um, for mothers who have not been present, um, some by choice of their own, some by external crises and circumstances beyond their control. Um, but for the moments that mothers have been there for us, whatever mother that is, want to celebrate how we've been taken care of and raised and set on a certain path. Now, when I uh, went to the confirmation retreat, Guppy was trying to get this video going for me um, as an example of what it looks like when, when we have mamas who bring us up right and teach us how to make good choices and how to apply our faith to everyday living so that we are living in the way um, disciples ought. So here's one example of what that looks like in a mall. Go to Macy's, but oh, I was going to go to Macy's, but Dillard's is having a sale. Man plans his steps, but the Lord directs his path. Look at these purses. Excuse me, this is fashion now? Lean not on your own understanding. Oh, Spencer's gifts? Mm-mm, guard your heart. Finish line? Oh, yes, run the race I have set before you. 30% off all things work together for good. Oh, would you look at these here? Run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. Uh, no thank you. I don't need any skincare samples. I am fearful and wonderfully made. Oh, there are Starbucks, thank heaven, streams in the desert. Look at these watches for such a time as this. Look at all this baggage. No, thank you. I have left my burdens at the cross. Oh, I love this bedding. Yes, all who are weary, he will give you rest. Look at these knives. These are perfect. Iron sharpens iron. Oh, man does not live by bread alone. Hey, Adam, you want to take a bite of this? Mm-mm, man's original sin. Microsoft only for me. Thank you. Oh, Lululemon, he will not tempt you beyond what you can handle. Oh, Zales, absolutely not. My treasure is in heaven. Payless is having a sale. Lead me not into temptation. Oh, judge all you want to. You without sin cast the first stone. Oh, love this hat. Look at this. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. I will dwell in the Nestle Toll House of the Lord forever. I come all the way in here for a sale and they don't have my size. Jesus, please, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. <laughs> so thank you, mothers, for teaching us how to live life. <laughs> and no matter where we are, no matter when we are, <laughs> um, it's fun. But in all seriousness, there's always something going on in life, right? Like there's always some change, some transition, some something that we've got to work through and overcome. And it's the only constant we can rely on. But oh my gosh, it gets exhausting at times. And this is the gift that we celebrate today. Because it's... It's such a crucial thing to have a constant in our lives that will remind us who we are, that will help us heal, that will help us pull ourselves back together, that will hold us accountable, um, that will help send us out into the world in a way that we are able to take on the storms that come and not just hold tight to get through them, but have a foundation that's strong enough to be able to find the good in the storm and the learning and be able to come through even stronger and more aware of who we are and whose we are. And it's such an incredible gift when our mother and our father are these things for us. But we know that that doesn't always happen in life. And so God has also gifted us with an extended family in the church. And, and it is very much my hope and prayer that in Atworth and in the church that we might be able to find that family, those mentors, those guides, those ancestors who will be our life breath, who know us better than we know ourselves sometimes and can call our name and be right there for us. We need a community because this is not a job that one or two people can do alone. It does take a village, and, and even sometimes the village breaks apart and fails. But that is where we trust that there is a God who is working for us, 
and that even when we encounter brokenness, we do not need let our hearts be troubled because there is a God who will find a way and find someone to work through to bring us the good news and the foundation and the hope that we need. And that is why we pray, and that is why we do this journey together, so that as many times as possible, we can be open and hear those Holy Spirit nudges to know where we need to be and for who we need to be present. And that's something that the priesthood of believers does all together, one for each other. And it's something that I've encountered beautifully here at Epworth and people taking care of each other before I even knew there was a problem or something had happened. This is what it means to journey together and what it means as our own calling for our own discipleship journey because even when we are given great gifts and mothers and fathers who have built this constant in our lives and given us this foundation to um, start from, there are always going to be tensions as we figure out who we are and what our call is and what place God has for us in the world. And we will always be called to do some kind of building and repair work to that foundation, to be intentional about being able to say what we need and when it doesn't come our way to ask for it. And that's one of the hardest things that I've encountered myself and in the conversations that I've had because there's nothing that is harder <laughs> than having your world falling apart and having to tell people how you want to be cared for. But that is also the work that we do together. And that is the work that we can do because of the God who is with us. Martin Luther describes this journey, this way, as hanging our hearts upon God. So for every piece of life that comes our way, for all the times when the foundation is so rock solid and it is time to dance and to celebrate and to build and run far ahead, for all the times when things are just breaking or falling through the roofs upon us um, and things are not working, to still hang our hearts upon God and to know that God has room for each of our hearts, that in God there is room for our heart. That is the message of comfort of this psalm, of this passage. I think of it as a psalm because it is a prayer, but it comes from Jesus right before that he is about to be crucified to his disciples. It's very much, as much as it is based in the Father's truth and love and, and abiding presence, there's got this mama feel to it to me because it's Jesus telling his disciples that he's going to go away and leave in them the directions, right? All the food that's in the fridge and how you're going to take care of yourself and what you're going to need to get done when so that you're going to be able to make it into the future and who's going to be here to help you and guide you and you better pay attention to Mrs. Smith. Um, that would be the Holy Spirit in the scripture <laughs> um, as we move forward. It's not that life will be easy. It's not that we won't encounter profound brokenness. It's that we have a family and that we have a God that we can hang our hearts upon and know that there is room for our hearts, no matter how broken things become. To have that comfort and that truth, that is the abiding presence that God is telling us about. That is the abiding presence that God is promising to Jerusalem in this passage from Isaiah of comforting the city as a mother. That is the promise that Christ is making and asking and showing and witnessing that as Christ dwells in God the Father, so can we dwell in Christ. So can we be so knit together that there is a safe place, a harbor of peace for us to come and to be filled and to be comforted and to be cared for and strengthened and sent out again. And there's also that mama moment of holding us accountable to making good choices and to being fully who only our mamas know we can be. There is a saint of the early church. Um, he who used to pray, um, acknowledging and that there was a space that God had for him to 
fill, but knowing that it would take all of him to fill it. So may we as disciples, as followers of the way of Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, may we hang our hearts upon God, knowing that there is room in God's heart for all of us, and knowing that we will work together and support each other and hold each other accountable because as much as God has a space for each of us, it will take all of us to fill it. So may we journey together in that fullness, able to apply every bit of scripture and truth that we learn in whatever situation we encounter, from malls to schools, from neighborhoods to work, no matter what. May we be followers of the way. 